and the member for Casey is waiting for you to be silent so he can get the call. The member for Casey has the call. Thank you, Speaker. And my question is also to the Treasurer. And I refer the Treasurer to his statement of 27 October 2011, when he said, and I quote, the revenue from the mining tax will be spread right across the country. Given that the mining tax has raised just $126 million in its first six months, can the Treasurer confirm that when he stated he would spread the benefits of the mining boom, he really meant $5.50 for every Australian? The member for Casey will resume his seat. The Treasurer has the call. Order. The Treasurer has the call. Well, you can tell how embarrassed the member was with that ridiculous question. What we've got here, completely. What, what and this I will give you 94A to leave the chamber. The member for Casey will leave the chamber. The Treasurer has the call. The Treasurer Speaker, has the call. Speaker, I was saying before that the attitude that has been taken today is similar to the attitude that uh, their predecessors took with the PRRT. Now, the PRRT was opposed tooth and nail by vested interests by the Liberal Party, but it's raised $28 billion. Now, they kept it. They kept it. They didn't come into government and say, oh, we'll get rid of it. So what we've seen again is that they're opposing the MRRT. The MRRT, which is an important long-term reform for Australia to make sure that Australians get a fair share of the mineral wealth they own 100 per cent. Now, it just so happens that its introduction has coincided with a bout of global volatility towards the end of last year, which had a dramatic impact on commodity prices a very dramatic impact on commodity prices. This was not an impact on commodity prices that was forecast by anyone in the private sector, by any of the companies, and it most certainly wasn't forecast by our official forecasters. But they should at least acknowledge that it has had a dramatic impact on revenue, and that's what the government has acknowledged. But what they won't acknowledge also is that in the second half of last year, it wasn't just the PRRT, the MRRT, it was company tax, capital gains tax and so on. All of them took a very significant hit from this global volatility. And the reason this is so important and the reason this debate demonstrates just how dangerous those opposite would be if they were running the country is this. What they are saying is to make up for this revenue whole, if you like, that has emerged because of all of these circumstances, they would take the axe to the social safety net and put a sledgehammer through our economy. That's how reckless they are. And of course, we heard in the House last week the retrospective approach that they would have taken during the global financial crisis, where they came in here and effectively said during the crisis they would have cut to the tune of $160 billion, which was the revenue write down. Well, where would the Australian economy be today if they had been in charge and done that? So what all this demonstrates is just how dangerous they are, because they're in denial with the most basic facts that go to the core of Australia's prosperity and economic success over the past five years. The ability of a government to, to move in and protect people and protect families, understanding the volatility in a global economy. Lives depend on that. But those opposite are a dangerous alternative because they don't understand the basic facts of our economy. And if they are in charge, they take a sledgehammer.